Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be doing some pruning. Here we are um, at the beginning of February, kind of late winter-ish. Probably the worst of my cold temperatures are uh, behind me at this point. I put up another video doing some pruning uh, a week or so ago, if you want to go back and look at that one as well. I'm going to be covering lots of things that I need to prune uh, this winter in this uh, landscape here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Haven't had to do any pruning uh, for the first two years of working on this uh, landscape project. Most of the plants are still pretty small, but um, I've reached a point where I can uh, start to uh, work on the shapes of things and bring some things down uh, because I don't. I want them to bloom at a certain height. We'll talk about that uh, in this in this video. I've got three Japanese boxwoods along the fence here that are just meant to be a green element up against this backdrop. Any of these kind of green plants that you don't care about the flowers uh, this is the time of year to be pruning on them so anytime during the month of february march even up through early summer um, if you want to bring you know get get some of these things under control that's going to be things like hollies and boxwoods and again just the green elements of your landscape that you're not really counting on for flowers and all i'm going to do on these is just uh take them and get them just kind of square it off on the top. I'm not actually going to bring this one down to that one's height. Um, I'm going to uh, let that one just catch up a bit, but I just want to get some of this wild uh, stretched pieces on the top of them uh, under control. So that's it. That's the entire pruning job on these, these uh, tiny little Japanese uh, boxwoods. But um, obviously if you have bigger hollies, bigger boxwoods, this would be the time of year that we could reset them. You know, I could cut these way down if I wanted to, if I needed to really bring them down lower, or maybe they've got a big damaged area in the side of them, uh, or they've just grown a foot or two taller than you want them. This is the time of year to do reset on green things. Uh, next to it uh, is a beautyberry. This is a native, native shrub that uh, I got this, this is a white burying uh, variety that I got from uh, Buddy Lee uh, as, a seed, as a seedling. It's really got a nice compact habit. Problem with this beauty berry is it's got to get larger every year uh, in order to flower and bury. So, um, you know, it could end up 10, 15, 18 feet tall in the future. It's not what I want from this shrub. Uh, you can take a beauty berry down to about six inches in height. Uh, in the winter time. They bloom on new growth uh, in the spring and then they uh, get a berry set on that in the early fall. So again, I could take this thing down to six inches. If I had a big woody one that I was just tired of um, and I wanted to reset. This one, I think each year it's gonna grow about three feet before it flowers and before I get berries on it. So every year, I can, I, I don't mind if it was a bit bigger than it is now, but this is near the max height that I want out of it. So every winter, I'm just going to take about two, uh, I'm going to take about two to three feet out of it and just kind of uh, create kind of a ball shape uh, out of that um, and then narrow it down a bit too because it uh, comes out in here into my uh, annual bed as well. So just going along uh, the outside of it, trying not to cut my wire for my, uh, from a microphone uh, at the same time. But again, just narrowing it back uh, all the way around and then uh, I'll take the height out. I'll take the height out from there. Some of these branches are a little bit bigger and I've got these bypass loppers, which are super sharp and they make just such quick work of some of these larger uh, limbs with no effort and it makes such a clean cut. I really, clean cuts is what this is all about. This is not a plant that I'm worried about cutting just above the bud kind of a plant. Uh, this plant is really very indestructible. It's gonna, it's gonna flush back out from wherever I cut it. And so there you go. I think I got all the heaviest of the, uh, of the branches off of it. And I'll go around here and just make sure I've, I've cleaned it up like I want it cleaned up. And I think, really, I think that's about, that's probably about all I want to do on this one. And again, okay, so now it's going to flush out from here, grow three feet or so, flower, and then bury. So it'll be, 
a little bit taller than it was this past season, but, um, and that's about where I want it to bloom every year. And this is a plant that can be, that can be done to. This is a native uh, American beautyberry. Next up is another native. Uh, these are Clethra. Uh, and you, what you'll notice here is I wanted three Ruby Spice Clethra. And you can see that I ended up with two Ruby Spice Clethra, which are pink. Uh, and uh, then a white one was mixed into it, the nursery that I went to, um, you know, um, had, had, to, had, to, had them mixed up a bit. But this is Hummingbird, which is white and uh, ruby spice turned out fine um, and, and, and in fact the smaller growing one is in the front somehow that worked out but so i'm just going to leave them these have great fragrant flowers that the pollinators absolutely love they don't bloom until the summer later than some other things bloom uh, great addition um, um, and, and again another another native uh, to the southeast united states these can be winter pruned and um, you know this Ruby Spice Clethra tend to be very fastidious. You can see how the two of them are growing very, very tall and narrow. Any top pruning we do on anything is going to get us, give us more suckering down here, fuller, a fuller shape from the bottom. Those um, Japanese boxwoods that I cut right from the beginning, top pruning them like that is going to cause them to get a bit wider at the base. That's something I want from this uh, Ruby Spice Clethra. So that's really my entire two things to accomplish. These can get six or eight feet tall and I don't want that. Uh, I got, you know, this, this tiny lot, I'd really rather have these bloom around three to four feet. And so again, this is a plant that's probably going to grow about two feet for it before it flowers. So I wanted to cut it about two feet below where I want it to flower. And that cutting will give me a slightly fuller plant uh, as well. So I'm just going to come right across the top, uh, right about in that area. None of this materials very heavy. Um, if you want to, with a, a clethra, you can come in here and, uh, and take off the, the flowers from where the flowers were from last year as well. If you want to get in here and get really technical, you know, and, you know, and, and clean it up, you can. You can take all these uh, old flower, spent flowers off. As soon as it flushes out, you're not going to see those anymore. So it's just not something I'm going to, uh, to worry about. This uh, um, hummingbird really just doesn't need a whole lot but I'm gonna cut it slightly lower than the, uh, than the uh, uh, Ruby Spice, just so it ends up staying smaller uh, this season. But again, cutting the type out of it to make it wider and um, cutting it about two feet lower than I want it to actually bloom. And uh, that's it, <laughs> really straightforward, really straightforward operation on that. And then one last Ruby Spice. Same thing. Looks like I'm butchering it. Looks like I'm hurting it. I am absolutely not hurting it. If these were newer planted plants, I would not get in here and cut them like this, but they've been in the ground for over a year. So um, good to go. They're going to bloom, you know, about two feet higher than where I have pruned them right now, which will be perfect in my summer garden. Make sure you're following along with the channel to see them. Uh, Clethra is one of my absolute favorite uh, native shrubs. Moving over here to this uh, um, clay era, we've done Clethra, now we're going to do clay era. Uh, those are always uh, fun, and I put them right side by side in the garden um, just so I can uh, uh, mix them up in my mind uh, as I'm talking. Uh, these got some winter, a little bit of winter damage on them. Um, winter, th these clethra is a plant that you'd prune in the winter if you need to prune them. Another one that you can reset hard in the winter if they've gotten out of control. Uh, but these had a lot of new growth on them um, during the uh, during the month of November, months of November and December when they should have been shutting down and that's got them stung a bit on the top. These get eight to 10 feet. Obviously I'm not letting them get eight to 10 feet right here in front of my lands, you know, right in front of the house in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of this bed. These are gonna be kept as little three, uh, three foot balls for the next five, six, seven years uh, is my plan. And so uh, they'll be sheared a few times during the season. These leaf out with beautiful red foliage. So each time I shear them, Guess what? I get the bonus of the new growth um, being quite beautiful on these. In the winter, they kind of have a purplish hue to them. This winter, they have a little bit of damage. Uh, so I'm just going to basically get in here and very lightly shear these and uh, take off this uh, damage uh, that is on the, uh, on the top of them. And uh, they're, again, they're going to flush back out in three or four weeks. Uh, well, maybe, I don't know, it's beginning of February. So maybe six weeks. We'll start to see a little bit of 
new growth on these in 10 weeks, they'll just be com almost completely red again. Um, very, very beautiful. But I'm gonna get them all to about the same, all to about the same height and remove this damage. They're gonna look better already, honestly, because they've been, looked a little rough this winter with that, the last few weeks with that damage on them. Not a plant that I needed to cover. It's not a, it wasn't in jeopardy of dying. It just had new growth at a time of year that it shouldn't have had uh, new growth on it. Uh, not gentle with these at all. There's five of them here, so. And I'll get in here. You can get in here with a rake um, and pull the, st the stuff that you're cutting out or go through here with your hand. Don't have to be that gentle about it and clean up the material that you're cutting out of them. Um, all right, there you go. Five uh, Clara, uh, Leanne Clara. I don't think I said this was Leanne. Leanne is a, um, I've got uh, one other very large growing Clara over there. I've actually got two other varieties of Clara in the landscape. They're great evergreen shrubs, shiny foliage. Most of them have some sort of interesting new growth on them uh, during the season and an interesting fall color uh, typically as well, fall or winter coloration as well. Next up, I have three Radiance Abelia in my front garden space. Uh, this variety stays very short and wide as you can see exactly how they're growing now. Occasionally they'll get a little bit of spiky growth in the middle of them. And I will usually follow that spiky growth down into the plant and actually cut Cut it very low down in the plant. It's usually a more vigorous uh, piece of it. Uh, don't just cut it off with the top of the top of the plant. Just go, follow it all the way down in there. Remove that entire piece, and you'll find that you get less of this taller spikiness in the middle of them. These don't need a whole lot. They're summer flowering, uh, and uh, winters or late winters the perfect time to do this. I'm probably a little bit early on this, but I'm doing it on purpose for the channel just to show you some pruning techniques, some thoughts that I have when I'm pruning, but you have up until, you know, early April, most of you watching this to do the things that I'm, I, that I'm showing you. So um, again, if this may seem a little early, it probably is. It's not going to hurt anything um, that, that, that I'm pruning, but again, you got plenty of time to do these things. Uh, this abelia, uh, if I needed to, I can go through and just do exactly what I've done with the boxwoods and the other things here and just give it a bit of an evening out. Uh, you know, pieces that have run up in here to the bed on the ground, uh, you know, I can cut those off. Um, I've got a rock in the middle of this that's supposed to be decorative, but the abelia have eaten it. That rock's gonna move pretty soon. Uh, but I can just, I can make them narrower. I can make them shorter. I can kind of do anything I wanna do here uh, to, uh, to reshape this. And immediately you can see, just that little bit of shearing on this, you can already see how much, uh, how much nicer that's gonna be as it leafs out in the spring. It will encourage more branching. The new growth is where the flowers come from. So, you know, more, the more branching, the more flowering. And again, I'll just do the same thing uh, to all three of these. And this is about as big as I wanna have these. And so, you know, um, Next year, I'll probably have to do a little more, a little more serious uh, pruning on them to control their width. Not so much the height, but the width. Some of these, um, I don't see any in this one, but some of these variegated abelia, you'll get a bit of a green uh, reversion. There'll be a green branch in there. If you see any green reversion, make sure you go all the way in, trace that all the way back into the plant and cut it out. Uh, that green uh, has more chlorophyll and it will be more vigorous than the rest of the plant. So um, your abelia can be, end up green very quickly, but that's it. I'm just, this is a light haircut to create some additional branching, some additional flowers and somewhat control the size and spread. Another summer flowering shrub or small tree is Vitex. Uh, this one um, I'm going to keep as a shrub that I'm going to allow to get maybe eight to 10 feet in height. Uh, these can be single trunk uh, trees uh, as standards. Uh, this one is very shrubby at the bottom, so it just kind of lends itself to being more of a shrub. So that's how I'm going to treat this one. This plant needs to grow three or four feet to bloom. And so I need to cut it 
each year in the winter uh, as it gets bigger, three to four feet lower than I want to keep it. Uh, and there's really nothing to know on this. I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to cut all these to about the same height. Uh, I have some concern because of the way this thing has such a, uh, a spreading habit that I am going to come in here and take off a few of these branches that are really going um, out to the side. Uh, I've got a few like that that uh, I'm going to go ahead and take them off now. I always say if it's something you're going to prune off in the future, just go ahead and get rid of it while you're, while you're working on it. But I, I'm, I want it more of kind of a a V shape, um, and currently it's, you know, I don't know what, an egg shaped or something like that. Uh, this branch that's going out to the side right here is one that I think ultimately is going to be removed, and so I'm gonna do it right now. Um, this hand pruners are a little undersized, but they're good and sharp. And so that was a big old limb to take off. Um, I have changed this plant more than I think I set out to. Sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes you'll start pruning on something and you'll realize you know, that things are, uh, uh, need to be cut a little more than you thought they did. But I think that's, I think that's it. Again, it's got to grow three or four feet in order to flower. And uh, again, follow along with the channel. You can see this in full flower uh, in the summertime. Uh, and uh, it should look much, much better. Cause again, a lot of these lower branches were heading way, way too wide. Last up for this video, this is a Caryopteris. This variety is called First Choice. I grew this one at my nursery for years. This is a great plant. It blooms in the late summer, early fall when almost nothing else is flowering. One thing you'll notice about this winter is we didn't get cold uh, in November and December. And this thing actually kept its leaves uh, up until now. Normally it would be more defoliated than this. It just got, they've been frozen onto the plant because this month actually has been cold. Uh, Caryopteris grows similar to a butterfly bush where you already see the growth uh, that's coming on it uh, the following year. And so if you want to get in here and be really exact, uh, come in here a little closer. So you can see these buds, you know, all of these buds along the stems here. And so if I want to get really exact, I can cut just right above one of these buds. Again, ultimately, I don't think it matters all that much. These are pretty... Uh, Pretty industrial little, uh, pretty industrial little shrubs. This is another one I'm considering bloom height. I've put it right in front of this fence. This fence is only two and a half feet tall or so, and so I don't. I'm not trying to, you know. Um, I'd like for it to bloom maybe two feet above the fence and kind of be. It'll, it'll, they'll end up kind of naked down at the bottom, as you can see during the summertime. The foliage will be up here, flowers will be up here. So I'm going to get it down to about 12 inches in height. I think I'll get two to three feet of growth and then it'll bloom in the late summer right above the fence and I'll have it under planted with some other flowering annuals and that kind of thing. I can cut it very, very quickly like this um, and I, again don't have to worry about it all that much or I can get in here and be rather exacting and, and find a bud along the stem and cut just above it um, completely and totally your choice. If it makes you feel better to do it that way, do it that way. Uh, Either way, you're not going to damage an established caryopteris. This one's been in the ground uh, coming up on a year. And uh, uh, this should be the absolute perfect height uh, for this plant uh, for, the, for this year to, to bloom right in the sweet spot. Right in the sweet spot. And the sweet spot for me on this plant is going to be right above the fence. Uh, and again, it'll be underplanted with some other annual flowering things. But that's uh, first choice Caryopteris. Uh, great, great late summer flowering shrub. Gives you, some, gives you some color on a shrub at a time of year when other shrubs have long bloomed. So next up on the list um, will be a few weeks. I'm going to wait for some of my early, early uh, flowering uh, plants uh, and some cold sensitive plants that I don't like to cut in the winter time. So maybe toward the uh, beginning of March, you'll see some of my camellias. I'll cut some of my camellias, osmanthus, once they finish flowering. So lots of other pruning tasks uh, coming up. Go back and watch that other video and this one, and you can see some of the, uh, some of the, some of the plants that can be pruned in the uh, dead of winter or best pruned in the uh, dead of winter or late winter. Thanks for following on.